Excellent. Well, thank you for joining me on this uh, Tuesday afternoon. This is a, this is my normal teaching spot. 2 p.m. on a Tuesday is typically when our paid programs run, um, but uh, we don't have any running until a few weeks from now. So we thought we'd keep the slot and um, say hello to everybody. So yeah, if um, uh, Kit Petty says, glad to be here grabbing a bite. That's okay. You don't need to be on camera. If you want to be on camera, that's awesome. Um, Many of you have got here probably because you know me from some way, shape or form. And if you go to our website, which I will share a link because you may not have this or you may, we'll see. Um, there we go. Back to Zoom. We make stuff happen.com is where everything happens. And right on that homepage, is, I'll share it now and show you. Um, there's a wee box. And I'm, all, I'm always about business gets done in email. We, we, we know this, uh, social media is like the gateway and business gets done typically outside of social media. So what we do is we always give something away and I have right here, it's called a social 2020 jumpstart guide. Some of you maybe have already um, signed up for this and gotten a copy of it. Some of you might not have seen it. So just go, it's in the chat box. We make stuff happen.com. Scroll down to this box, drop your name and email. And before the webinar is finished, you'll have your own copy of this. And there's a sequence. We've got three emails in a sequence. First of all is the jumpstart guide, which is how to post, which is what I'm going to talk about today. The second email you'll get is when to post and also the how, how to decide when to post by looking at your analytics. And then the third one we do is we send you a calendar. So we've, we've spent the whole of 2020 um, looking at it through our eyes about which are the days, these national days that you see are the ones that are gonna be most popular, which are the hashtags that would be trending and give you a chance to sort of get a, a sort of a head start on your strategy so that you could you could look at what's going on. Um, Aaron Duffy, oh, fancy seeing you. Um, great to see you. Aaron came out today. <laughs> I should define that. Um, Aaron did a most amazing stage talk quite recently in um, Philadelphia, I think it was. And part of her launch strategy is telling people about it today. So it's on her Facebook page and her LinkedIn, I believe, and her Instagram coming. So welcome amid your busy launch day. Thank you. Good to see you. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to walk you through, um, I'm not going to walk you through the jumpstart guide itself page by page because we're all adults and you can totally do that yourself. But what I want to do is really give you a shot in the arm around what social media is about in 2020 and what we should be doing that's going to make a difference for you and your marketing and your business and your life in general. And th th there is a very undefined line now between business and personal on social media and a lot of people struggle to find that balance. I think I have. I've uh, been doing it a little while, as Kiki will tell you. We, her and I had lunch in May's restaurant, gosh, in about and in 2011, 2012? 11. Hang on, I'll meet you. Way back in the day. 12 years ago, babe. 12 years ago. <laughs> I started out, I'll tell you a little bit more about how I started out, but Kiki was one of our earliest uh, meetup attendees, as was Lindsay probably wasn't far behind when we used to do everything locally, but now the world's our stage and um, we can do that locally. So I'm going to jump into my PowerPoint. I typically can't see the chat box when I'm in PowerPoint mode, but if you have a question or something occurs to you, feel free to drop it in the chat box. If Lindsay doesn't answer it, who works with me, uh, I'll get back to it. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm honored to uh, spend this hour with you and let's, let's, to make some stuff happen. So all being well, you can see my PowerPoint and then I just move you over here and I go into display mode. My little apple catches up with itself. There we go. So can I get a thumbs up that I've got the right big screen there? Perfect. Okay, because I'm going to mute you guys so I can see the full screen. So this is Mount Baker. It's literally a view outside of my window on a sunny day. It's a photograph that I took, and then with a little bit of Photoshop, we overlaid our team. And really that, to me, that's what social media is all about. It's about sharing moments with people. And these are my people, um, including baby Yoda in the middle. Huh? 
And um, what we try and do is we do a lot of business. We, we build websites, we do strategy, we do branding, we do many, many things, um, but everything has a digital component. And in, in the world of digital now, some stats, some Hootsuite from just a few months back, 7.7 .7 billion people in the world, unique users on mobile, 5 billion people, unique users on the internet, 4.3 billion, active social media members right now, 3.5 billion people. That's a lot of people. And realistically, if you're not found online, if you're not dominating page one of Google, if you're not coming up Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, whichever platform you choose to be in, do you really exist? I mean, there's that, you know that phrase, you know, if a bear poops in the woods, you know what he sees it, does he really, you know, whatever it is, or makes a noise when a tree falls. That's kind of the same on, on online now. So that was what 29 looked like for us was helping a lot of clients get found on online. And you've seen that like 2018 is game time and 2019 is practice and 2020 is now game time, all these different phrases. But you know, we saw a lot of things change in, in 2019. And you think of companies like H&M and um, Forever 21 and many, many retail stores, the digital landscape changed and they, they just went the way of Blockbuster. And there was one block to, Blockbuster left in, um, in Oregon, just one in the world. And there was nothing wrong with Blockbuster. I mean, they, they had a great service. Everybody went there, they bought popcorn, they met their neighbors. But what happened was the world changed and Blockbuster didn't. And, you know, we, we were seeing like all these empty Sears stores right now and all these other stores that are just gone. And that's because, you know, people's habits of, of viewing have changed. So, you know, Blockbuster had a chance to buy Netflix. Netflix had a deal that they wanted to partner with Blockbuster. Blockbuster said the data told them that people would still rather travel, look where they are. But then at the time, Netflix biggest competitor, as their CEO said, was sleep. But you know, every business has a Netflix coming. And now when we look at Amazon TV and Disney Plus and um, Amazon Prime and Apple TV, everybody's out there. So even whereas Netflix, you know, literally two years ago did not have any competition, now there's a ton. And some of the best TV is on these digital streaming channels because there is no commercials. There is no commercial break. You can fast forward, you can stream, you can pick up the episode whenever you want to. What is that doing? It's giving people a chance to get it the way they want to get to. And when you think of Netflix or, I bought a new Apple computer this week and within an hour it was all set up and I didn't have to do anything. It just migrated on the cloud from my old backup. You know, I, I, need, I need stationary or I need something from, I've got timing on my, on my PowerPoint deck, which I did not realize, I'll have to keep going back. But anything I need from Amazon, you know, I, I just look at my app, we're normally within two days, it's at my door, free delivery. We're very soon gonna get Uber in Vancouver, um, a lot of the world experience already. You know, you have an app, they come to your door, you can see what the driver looks like, you know how much it's gonna cost. All of these companies have got it right. Airbnb, whoever you wanna look at. And, you know, we can't blame them for being good. We can't blame them for taking over local business. What local businesses have to do is become good too. And that's really what we want to look at today. And, you know, when, when you think about social media, I mean, you can't not, but think about this little guy. This is a guy that is just driving the internet right now. If you've seen The Mandalorian, if you've heard anything about the child, or sometimes people are calling this character Baby Yoda, um, suddenly like two months ago this didn't exist now it's like a huge worldwide phenomenon because of baby yoga going out for chicky nuggies and chalky milk and all these wonderful memes but what did disney do somebody somebody said to me i read a report like disney totally missed the boat they should have had all the merchandise ready for christmas they would have made millions on baby yoda toys and yes they would but what Disney chose to do was something different. They kept the child, the Mandalorian here, who doesn't really have a name, and it's definitely not Baby Yoda, but um, Baby Yoda species. They kept it a secret, and it made them unique, and it made them different. They'll get the merch sales, you know, when they're ready. But that's what we have to do, and that's what I want to be able to do today, is talk about how we create a customer experience that's different from everybody else. And if you can create that customer experience that's different from anybody else, your social is going to work. I mean, I was in Costco 
on Sunday. And what are they selling? Easter. Right after Christmas, Christmas Isle has turned into the Easter Isle. And it's like, oh, for goodness sake. But what's wrong with that? I mean, Costco are typically wholesalers. Costco want to be ahead of the curve, typically by three, four months all the time. Wouldn't it be kind of cool if your social media was ahead of the curve? Wouldn't it be cool if you were the Costco of your industry? So great service, great prices, great customer experience, great customer care, but they still make money. I'm not talking about giving everything away. They still make money. And you look at the badges on Costco and you look at how long people have worked for Costco. Some of those badges go back a long time, longer than me and Kiki on social media. Um, so how could you, if you like, be the Netflix, the Uber, the Disney Plus, the Costco of your industry in your local space? How do you do it? You've got to stand out because almost everybody that you know who's doing what you do probably has a Facebook page. What makes you stand out is this. What makes you, and this is so great that Erin's with us, we talked about this this morning, is what's your story? What makes you different, right? My story is a pain in the neck. I was in a car accident in, in 2008. I had to have major surgery on my neck. It took a long time for me to recover. There was me straight after the surgery. There was me sort of desperately trying to go through pain meds and, and get back to life. And in 2009, I literally had to rebuild my life. I had to rebuild my neck. I had to rebuild my health. I had to rebuild my business because I'd been out of it for almost a year. And this is what these were the tools that I had in my beautiful white MacBook with my kids on the desktop and a BlackBerry. And what I did was I taught myself social media. And this was a post that I did learning about the greatest, greatest marketing tool ever invented, in my opinion. You know, I want to fast forward from 2009 to today. There I am, you know. Not quite today wearing shorts on my, on my sofa, but recently. Um, this is what people are doing now. Social media is not a nine to five or an eight to four. Social media is for whenever somebody has a device on their lap. Most people watch TV with at least one device on their lap, if not more. Maybe a phone, a laptop, tablet. And if you can, I wouldn't say interfere, but if you can invade somebody's social space in that grid time of when they've got something open in front of them, the chances of being noticed are pretty high. Except we have now reached saturation point in social media, whereas our business pages and our LinkedIn and our Twitter account and some degree our Instagram already is getting buried. And it's getting buried because the market is saturated. So what we have to do is we have to look at ways that, to do things differently, which is why you're here. And I'm delighted that you're here. So we could just bury our hand that, head in the sand, make a blanket fort behind our sofa and think it's too late. I can't do this. But don't, because there's a lot of people like this lady who could be our ideal customer who is online looking for a solution. And wouldn't it be great if we could marry up you with that solution? And this is where it is 2020, absolutely your time to shine. Because if you can match that need, show up in such a personal way that they enjoy your stuff, the chances of doing business with these people is actually really high. So even though Google does not have any social media to speak of anymore, you would have thought in the last 10 years, Google could have at least got something right in the social media world. Uh -uh. There is not a social media platform that Google has tried. Maybe there's four or five of them that they've tried that has worked, but they are still the world's number one search engine. And their mission is to organize traffic and information to make it universally acceptable and useful. So we still want, as part of our social strategy, to be really, really good at Google. And the way to do that is to feed what I call the Google machine. Um, so when you Google a business, like I met these guys quite recently, AWC Solutions, didn't know who they were, just put them into my search box. There's the building, there's some reviews I can find about them and a lot of products that they sell, okay. I haven't gone to social media. I haven't gone to the website. All I've done is Google. So you need to Google yourself and sort of find out what it is that Google knows about you. And I'll show you a little bit more about that because one of the secrets that we teach our clients to get found on Google page one, which is that right-hand side column, right? That top right corner, that's some primus real estate on, on the internet is by doing posts. And you do posts through a program called Google My Business. If you're not on Google My Business or you're not sure, literally go into the Google search bar and type in Google My Business. 
from that, it's going to show you when you put in the name of your business, what Google knows about you. You might find a box that says, own this business, question mark. And that means it hasn't been claimed. It's super easy to do. It takes about five working days. But when you own it, it makes a massive difference to how you are found online. And that's the first base of social media really is getting found online. And that to me is like this yoga pose of social media is like, we want peace and harmony in our lives. We don't want to be working 18 hours. We want the internet to go to work for us. And this is how it works because I look at a lot of website traffic and you know, this is a real client of mine. And I, if I was to look at these numbers, I'd go, oh crap. What's going wrong? I mean, look at the traffic difference, you know, month on month. Look at the traffic difference year on year. We're doing something wrong. But here's what's changed. This is Google Insights as opposed to Google Analytics. And this is where you just show up on Google. And more people now will go to Google. They will find you without even going to your website. Press a wee button like they have here. So these are the number of calls that this client, I can't name, name it is, gets on a daily basis through Google search, not through their website. So when you look at like 15 calls, 18 calls a day via Google, without even them knowing your phone number, just pressing an online button through the mobile device, then you think, hmm. And when I spoke to him, because really the bottom line is, are you busy? And when he tells me, dude, I'm busier than ever. We have more jobs in our queue than ever before. We're getting more walk-ins. I've never had so many inquiries for our services. And I go, so the data doesn't tell at all because the data doesn't show you eyeballs, but Google Insights does. So in that same month that he got, whatever it was, 476 clicks on his website, he had 5,900 eyeballs find him online, almost like a hundred times more. So the phone calls, and then we looked at, because we use Google My Business a lot. So this is his industry at the bottom there, red. This is businesses like you in this particular industry. And then look at his. Now sure, there's a few dots, and that was a Monday and a Monday and a Wednesday. We checked it out for the month. Running up to Christmas, there's not a lot of people online, I guess, but I'm surprised it was so low. But look at the other curves, like a thousand people, you know, were looking at this guy's pictures on his Google My Business before they've got to his website, or his Facebook page, or his Twitter, or his Instagram, this is the secret. This is, if you just take one thing away today, Google My Business could be your redeeming grace. Because we know now that people are not ready to just pick up the phone and talk to you. They prefer to check you out online. Like 70% of people now would rather talk to you after they've made their mind up to make the call in the first place. So what are they finding? Are they finding good reviews? Are they finding great pictures? So how do we do that? What does that look like? Well, there's, there's a number of things that, you know, businesses rely upon. I mean, search engines, TV, word of mouth. We can't affect all of these. We don't have the budget typically, even when most of our clients don't have budget for TV. But there's a few things that we can do. We can get found on search engines, which is Google predominantly. We can get great word of mouth, which hopefully you're getting anyway. I could teach you how to get that better, but I can't teach you how to get it in the first place because you have to be good at talking to people. But then there's social media comments and those reviews online. If you just majored on those four areas, you will have more business than you know, you know what to do with genuinely. And a lot of the people that work for us are in that boat. We as a company are in that boat. I can't begin to tell you how quickly my staff are telling me how busy they are and it's like the sixth day of the month because we've had so many leads come in over the Christmas period already. And we literally just get found on Google. A lot of people are talking about us. We're always on social media. And if you check us out, we have some really good reviews. So that's where you want to be too. And what I've tried to do, and Kiki will verify this, I've spent a long time teaching people for free. Very happily teaching people for free on stages and meetups pubs, coffee shops, one-on-one, -on -one, one to many I have become what's called a leading authority, a thought leader, if you like, in the social space. And I give my best stuff away. I have no problem telling people what it is they need to do without charging for it because it comes back. And the more you give out, honestly, the more it comes back. Call it karma, call it you know, universal harmony, call it paying up forward, call it tithing, whatever you want to call it. It works. And in 2020, 
we want to be more people focused around the customer experience, the customer service, the customer joy of working with us than anything else. And over these years, I, I've put sort of social media together in like a five step process. Uh, I teach people how to engage. I show people how to create social media that's really enjoyable. We call it entertainment. I talk a lot and Lindsay joins me a lot on this about how we educate people through our blog, through our videos. So much so, if you get those three pieces right, people feel empowered that working with you could take them to a place they probably couldn't get to by themselves. And if you get those four stages right, the enticing piece is like, hmm, and then you get to the website, they read some about it, they fill in a form, you get the form back, you respond in a timely fashion. 85 out of the 90% of the time when I get a lead, I close it. 85 to 90% of the time. People say, oh, if you got one in four or two in five, and it's like, no, no, no. How about nine and 10? Nine times out of 10, when we get a lead, we close it and we get a lot of leads. We just literally have to pick the ones that we think are working with us. It's a great fit, right? That's what a good social media strategy can really work for you. So, you know, pick your poison or pick your platform, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, YouTube channel, and indeed Google My Business, which I'll call it social, it's not really, but it kind of is. This is the landscape that we have for free. We don't own any of these platforms, that we're all renters sort of in a, in a condo, if you like, in these platforms, but they can, make a biggest, they can make a big difference. You just have to pick where your customers are. I used to have a graphic which had like a fish hook and a little fish in a barrel. It's like, go fish where the fish are. So ask your customers, do you use Instagram? Do you, do you have Pinterest boards? Maybe you're more, more business focused or do you prefer to watch a video? Do you want things in like 140 characters? You know, do you like Google reviews? Whatever that looks like, ask your customers where they are and then go fish them. And this is where this engagement piece really, really comes to town because I stay in touch with all of these people through engaging. And it takes me a lot of time and apparently I spend eight to nine hours a day on this device. That's not me being addicted to the internet. That's me, that's my business. This is my business. My phone is my office. And because of that, I have built up incredible relationships. Some of them go back a long time. Some of them are very, very new where I spend time because I care about the people that I'm engaging with. And when people sh know that you care, they want to do business with you. So we, we, uh, we have a different philosophy around business. I, I'm, I'm not a big analytics guy. I'm very much a gut feel. I'm very much I'm like, does it feel right kind of guy? But when you get it right, it works. Because what we've now found is that our customers have become our marketing department. More people are telling other people about me than I am, and they're coming to me pre-qualified. It's not awesome. And if your marketing can help people go to a place that they couldn't go to by themselves, i.e. if they believe in you, and here's the other piece of this, if you believe in them, and I had this conversation with Erin the other day, actually, I'm sure she what me saying, but she specifically said to me, you know what, Jonathan, we get along great, but one of the things that I'm working with you is because you believe in me. You see the greatness in me. You see the potential in me. And I'm hiring you as my coach because you're going to help me achieve that because of this belief. So belief is a two-way street. And then, you know, it's about finding meaning. More people are interested in life now than money. Let's be honest. People will take a lower paid job for a company that is more ethically balanced. You look at how much people are talking about recycling and reusable and plastic straws and plastic water bottles. I mean, people are just against it. It's affecting our climate. It's affecting our planet. Look at Australia right now. So people want to work with companies that are ethically balanced, that pay it forward, that work with a local food bank, that donate money to charity, that support cancer galas. All these things that come out of your social media are not, look at me, look at me, aren't I great? No. What you're saying to people is, these are the things that I care about. These make a difference for us as a, as a company, as a family, as an individual. I'm faith-based. Certain things you know, appeal to me more. That's okay if it's not for other people. We, we support a lot of non-faith-based charities too. But finding meaning in what you do and being passionate at what you do transcends business. And people will then often work with you because of what you stand up for, because of the way you live your life, because of how long you spend you know, working with disenchanted youth or how long you've been married or how long 
you volunteered at a food bank or how long you've been in business, all of these pieces make a difference as to whether people want to work with you or not. And it really comes down to this. Be more human. The one thing I think I've got right on my social media is that when people meet me in real life, they know who I am already because they've met me in social media. And whether it's you know, a physical meeting or an online meeting, and a lot of people I work with, I never meet physically. I do eventually at some point, but quite often I don't work with people physically. But because of humanity that we share together on social media, it works. So you know, let's go back. Pick your platform. These are the main five that I would recommend you put your efforts into. Facebook, for the most part, for most businesses, is still the right one. Instagram is a close second. Facebook bought out Instagram deliberately. Slightly younger audience, slightly more dynamic, slightly more millennial. But Facebook and Instagram are, are, are by far the two. YouTube is like, you cannot not be on YouTube. And I'm going to talk about that a bit more later on. Most of us have a professional side to our business and we want to be found on LinkedIn. A lot of leads come to us via LinkedIn. And as I talked about, we want to get found on Google too. So if you could, if you could master these five, you would be in incredible shape. But if you want to just pick one, that's okay too. I picked Facebook. I went all in on Facebook in 2008. And it's still my, my bestie, if you like. It's still the one that I probably spend the most time on and by far brings us the most leads. But at the same time, my business page sucks. There's no other word for it. It sucks. For 20,000 likes, I get the most pathetic engagement. I'm not unique. I know that. But I get a lot of business from my personal page, but you're not allowed to do business on your personal page because of ending up in Facebook jail. So you have to have this balance of the two pages, right? So I have, if you find me on Facebook and if we're not friends, you know, what's with that? Find me today and say, hey, I was on your webinar, such and such, join me. So you'll find me, it's a public personal profile there, which is me, there's my wife and I, there's a view out of my window, just keeping it real on a sunny day. And then I have my business page, which is we make stuff happen. This is what we're talking about right now, social 2020, this is our theme. And you, it's very important that you have a balance of both, but more times than not, you're gonna get the engagement from your personal page, but from your personal page, this is a realtor lady that we're working with in the States right now, make sure from your personal page that you're just one click away to your business page. So in this one, Courtney is a founder at Grow Your Mind, Grow Your Business. So she's a realtor, but she's also a life coach for female entrepreneurs in the Seattle area. One click away, and I, I haven't even clicked it, I'm hovering over in it, and I can see her business page. And that's you know, really what you want to do is have that one click from personal to business and backwards and forwards. You can show that the person who manages the business page is you. If you're okay with that. If you have young kids or you're in a witness protection program or there's something odd about how you do business, let's have a chat about that and I'll help you do an alternative strategy. But typically, it should be one click away. And then we know what Facebook looks like. We, you know, people are scrolling every single day and then sometimes something pops out. And this is an old post now, but it's still a post that has got me the most, the most light. It's like, this post has been liked 120,000 times. I mean, it's insane. And it was the day that I moved house here into Abbotsford. And it was a milestone moment for my wife and I, and it's still my biggest moment on Facebook. And this is what people love to do. They love to celebrate. But more in times now than just sort of a formal post like that is a story. And just a quick tip on business pages, one of the best ways of getting onto somebody's personal feed is for them to like your page, of course, but then they don't come back. But if you can create business stories and you'll see just there on the, the, the We Make Stuff Happen logo, there's a blue circle with a blue cross. This is where you start the story. And when I click on that, and we'll get into these a little bit more. This is where stories matter. And you know, Take it from the man himself, stories are the future. Posts are cool, but stories are the future. And there's nothing more powerful than a great story. I mean, I was talking the other day about The Mandalorian and The Morning Show and The Crown and all these new shows. I have an amazing engagement with people by just talking about what shows I'm watching. People love a good story. They love a good cast. They love a good show. And you know, Game of Thrones, I mean, this was season eight, loved it. A lot of conversation about that. Am I talking business? No. But am I getting to know people? Yes. So even if you're doing the Golden Globes and you take a picture of your TV and you share it, 
That's what's making a difference. And if you can put these stories on your business page, so click the little blue cross and your icon on your, on your mobile device, if you like, then you get this drop it down in the middle, which is create a story, click that. And then you get all of these things you can do, creating like a moment or a temperature or a feeling or a poll or add a picture, add some graphics seconds away from creating a story. These stories will actually get you way more eyeballs on a business page than a post and they cost nothing. They only last for 24 hours. They don't disappear effectively, but they do in the story, but you can highlight them. But this alone for 2020 is a great way of making your business page come back to life because otherwise this is it. I'm here. I'm ready. I have 20,000 likes and no one's talking to me. Um, get over it. Find different ways of talking to people. And that's where the story is going to make a difference. Cause we, social media has changed. It will continue to change. It is permanently changing. Kind of why I like it, but you have to rethink how you're doing your social media. If you want to make it work for 2020. And we can now because of Google plus and things like that, make a big impact in the local community, which is typically the ripple effect of where we go out by getting that right, then trying to be all things to all people on the internet. Cause it's just, it's, it's difficult, but it's not impossible. One of our clients happens to be one of my children. Interesting. Her name is Gemma. Uh, her Instagram account is called the yacht stew. And over the last four years, she has deliberately been paying it forward within her industry. You can now see that she has now got over 10,000 likes, which is a magic number on Instagram. She never bought them. She grew it organically. She didn't do the follow for follow. She's only following like a thousand people. But every day you can live the life of a billionaire through Gemma's Instagram on this private super yacht that she lives. She's gotten to the point now that she is a paid influencer. She makes money out of companies, crew agents, uh, table decoration companies, uniform companies. She paid Gemma to feature them in her blogs, pay Gemma to review the products online. She's doing this while she's traveling around the world. She's doing this to set herself up for maternity uh, income. So eventually when she leaves yachting and sets up home and Kiki or she'll need a mortgage um, and does all of this, she's already built an audience up, which is working and following her and loving her because she's paying it forward. And the secret is, and I do this all the time, is to be authentic, to be real. If you're having a bad day, have a bad day. If you're having a great day, have a great day. Share it, be emotional and show people that you care. You know, if you get on a stage, if you get to speak, if you know, capture those moments, because it's those moments that are bridging this connection between the people that need you and the people that you, that you want to work with. And this always comes down to this phrase that, um, People sort of say to me, well, I even had it today. I, someone said, wrote to me and said, I need to make money out of my social media. Can you show me how? And it's like, mm, well, let's have a look at your social media first and see what you're doing. And I guarantee you, her social media probably says, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. And she's looking for a return on investment. You know, I get that. We all want a return on investment on our time and our money. At this point, I have not told you to spend one cent on social media on an ad. What I want to be able to do is show you how you get a return on interaction through the strategy that I'm showing you. And I think you've seen that already, how I'm doing it. So this is Karen. She's a client of ours in Florida. We just finished building her a new website. One of the things we did as we were building a new website was to create a Facebook group. And she has now gotten a whole brand new community of over 2000 people in a closed Facebook group all the time that we're building her a new website. So you don't have to wait for perfect. You don't have to wait for a website in the first place. You don't have to wait for the next glam photo shoot. You can be doing stuff every single day on Facebook, especially working with people in a group as we do with all of our courses gets you the best ROI because people in that small group get notifications of everything you do. You can have fantastic conversations within that group that you won't be able to get anywhere else. And it, you know, I'll, I'll quote Zig for a little while. You can have anything in life that you want, providing you're willing to help enough other people get what they want. He died like eight years ago, but his messaging is stronger now than ever because we're still sharing. And that sharing comes down to photographs like this is Lindsay, who's uh, on the call too. You know, we couldn't be smiling, you know, more happy because we love what we do. And simply this, you know, forget the B2B scenario or the B2C scenario. Just think about person, person to person. 
I was talking to the CMO the other day of Pepsi. He's just retired, but I would never have gotten a call with him. And he called me because he'd seen a video series that I did about, I actually, it's called The Shaving Chronicles, where I shave. And I ended up speaking with this guy in New York that I would never have found. I would probably be too intimidated to even reach out to him on LinkedIn, but he called me. And in the end of the day, we all, you know, pick up a cup of coffee, drink or we or herbal tea or hot water or cold water we all do the same things and we we're all on an equal playing field on social media and we just have to quite often get over ourselves right so i talked about video before and i said if you are not using video truthfully you have the wrong strategy i would go so far to say too also if you are using a strategy from last year you don't even have a strategy because the social media landscape has changed so much. One of the things that I did, and I met this guy in New York because of this, is I created a video series of myself. It's called The Shaving Chronicles. It's uh, a Facebook Live that I do pretty much most Monday mornings, and I don't beat myself up if I don't manage it, but most times I do. And I have to shave anyway, and I just riff on the week, you know, about what we're doing, what's worked, what's not worked, where my brain's at, what I'm thinking about. And people come join me, fascinated with the fact that <laughs> This dude is shaving on Facebook Live and having a real-time conversation. That is my sink. That is, I'd like to say I am sponsored by the Real Shave Company, but I'm not, but I still love the product, so I'll endorse it anyway. But this is something that's made me unique. This is something that's taken me three years in the making, but it's given me a lot of credit. It's surprising me how many people have seen my shaving chronicles. It blows me away, I meet people all the time now. I saw you on the internet. I saw you on YouTube. I saw you on Instagram. You've got to find something that works for you, something that you can do that's very different. There's this typo in that. I must fix that. That's interesting. So when you think about this now, let's go back. We talked about Facebook being like number one, but just look how close YouTube is to Facebook. It's pretty darn close. Then what's next? WhatsApp, then Messenger, then WeChat, which is more Asian, and then Instagram. So right up there, you know, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Messenger, they're all part of the Facebook family apart from YouTube. They're all in there. So a lot of viewing hours being spent on these platforms. So are you being found when people are looking at these platforms, right? Then we look at the, the stats of these people. I'm not a numbers guy, but you have to realize the value of how many people watch video. 93% of people prefer to watch a video. 51% of people would rather watch a video than read a blog. So much of us now are using streaming music and because there's no ads. I don't even have radio in my car. I mean, I kind of do, but I never listen to it because I'm always on satellite. But I do listen to a lot of podcasts and I still believe that podcasts have a lot of room to grow still. But I think the secret is to do a podcast and a video at the same time, which is what we're doing, and then share that out because these stats don't lie. 93% of people prefer to watch and consume content through video. So are you making video? Is your YouTube channel like super up to date? Do people get excited about every time you post a video? I mean, this is not just about me. This is a client here in Abbotsford who make windows and doors. And we have made multiple videos from the shop floor to the management, to the guys in the field, to the homes that they build. These videos are so darn sexy. But if you go into a house, you know, that's a nice window. Would you look at the quality of that door? Nobody talks about windows and doors. They talk about the view. They talk about the security. They talk about the vista that can just be experienced. So even though it's a window and door company, we focus on the experience. We focus on the clients. We focus on the types of homes that they have their products put into. And it's working so well in their social strategy. Just insane. So this is us, this is my team. Simple as this, tell your story and have fun. These are the four ladies that work with Lindsay and I helping write social media for clients. We do that as a service. And this is what people should see when they see your business. They should see energy, smiley faces. And the, the only way they're gonna see that is when you are constantly sharing your story through the internet, through your phone, through stories, through video. People are now telling us that when you put video and text on the same page, Three quarters of the people would rather watch the video about a product or a service than read about it. Three quarters of the people, well, lazy. We want our eyeballs entertained. So if you're not 
making video, you are so missing out. If you're struggling with video, I mean, I walk around with these cute little selfie sticks, you know, I give them away to all of our clients. Um, that's it, that's all I need. I have my own recording studio, an iPhone and a selfie stick, that's all I need, and you can do it. So think about this. We have Apple watches, Apple devices. I mean, I'm an Apple guy. We had a question yesterday, Apple versus Android, and 81% of people said Apple. It's so interesting. Uh, it's just, I think Android people have very loud voices. Not that I'm against Samsung or anybody else, but I'm just an Apple kind of guy. But we have the technology, but are you using it? Are you using it to its fullest advantage? Are you using the Facebook family to all it's worth? So we've talked about Facebook, but Instagram is a very close second. Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp. I mean, typically, I do more communication through Messenger and WhatsApp than email and phone because it's so easy for me to do that. I can see if somebody's online. I can see they're reading my message. I can see uh, if they're online so I can expect to get a reply. I record it all on my phone. All of these are coming in this year into one central inbox as well. Facebook have given us so many great tools and we have not chosen typically to use them to their fullest advantage. But one thing I will say about 2020, can you beware RAC? And this is not the Royal Automobile Club in the United States. It is random acts of content. What we really, really need to do is have a strategy around what we're doing each day. Have a strategy of what's working and then you go back and rinse and repeat and do it again. How you make video, how you show up online, good sound, good lighting, free webinars, all of these things in their place will give you a winning strategy. Okay, time for me, this is my slip time. You ready for some more? I still got some time, right? Yep, I got 18 minutes. All right, what we try and do every week, um, we do this every Thursday morning, is I get people to sit in a miracle seat, and we're gonna do this at the end of this call. I don't call it a hot seat because quite often when I get into my vein and we're, we're talking marketing strategy, genius ideas just come out of the ether and we don't even know they're coming. So for me, 2020 is about going for it um, and really helping as many people as I can. And I will tell you that we do a course. Um, I'm not going to do a hard sell on this today at all. It's called the Social Media Bootcamp. It starts in a couple of weeks. Um, this will be bootcamp number 21. I was just keep a record and you know we've done it for many different industries but the reason we do this is I teach for five straight weeks those five E's of social media that I mentioned to you and I then do five live Q&A sessions with people so five weeks of teaching along with five weeks of just live Q&A and it makes a huge difference and we'll, we'll do some miracle seats right now but if I can give you a few takeaways for today and I'll, I'll give you some links as well when I come back onto it. Think of three things that you could do differently from leaving this call. First one is on your business page, you can see that rainbow color around my logo. It's because of the story is there. Think about how you could make stories every single day. Even if it's just, I just sat in the webinar and I watched 16 other people with me and I learned from this guy with a funny accent. That's a story. The second piece that I want you to take away is, is video. There is no question that YouTube is the king of video. Facebook try and do its best, but it doesn't compete with YouTube still. Google owns YouTube. More times than not, when you look up something on Google, the first thing that Google's trying to show you is a how-to video. So make stories, make video. And the third make is make use of the tools that you have in your hand. I personally, if I never got another email again in my life, I'd be delighted. But, I caveat that by saying that most of my communication now is through Facebook Messenger. I video chat, I call, I message, I send attachments. Any of my clients know if they want to get in touch with me, it's way quicker to message me than it is to try and call me or let alone email me for goodness sake. Um, Cause they'll find me instantly and that's where I hang out. So make stories, make video, make the most of Messenger and your social 2020 could be really, really, really exciting. But I'm excited now because I want to stop my sharing and I want to see if we could do so hot seats. So Kip's in it. Yes, you are. Camille says, what if you don't watch TV? That's fine. You don't need to watch TV. Um, thanks for joining us, Camille. I know you're a busy lady. Um, a lot of people stream and Jeannie's here too. Yay. Hi, Jeannie. So it's just people I haven't, I haven't seen for a while. So I'm excited when I meet people. Um, 
doesn't matter. Most people are consuming digital through through the mobile phone. They'll be watching something that looks like TV. Um, but yeah, yeah. So let's just let's just try this out. How could I answer a question for somebody? Could I look at somebody's um, social media? Could I uh, actually while well, well, I remember? Because I should do this um, next week in. Um, we come today at this very time. I'm doing a second webinar, which is where I will be going deep on what working with us looks like. This is not today. Um, it's a webinar. We call it a masterclass. Uh, very much around if you were to do the boot camp with us, what would it look like? What could be the results that come out of it? And we showcase a lot of businesses we work with who have done that boot camp and how that did. So again, feel free to register. There is no charge. There's no heavy heavy sell, but. Um, that's what I'm going to be doing this time next week. Um, but for now, I want, I want to see if I can help you guys. So anybody got a question that I can answer, I could showcase? Um, you've got 15 minutes, all, all, all to us, and uh, we, can, we can have some fun. Uh, Jeannie says, I have not used stories at all, but making it my goal. What are the steps to get started? Awesome question, Jeannie. So Jeannie has a company, okay, let me get this right, in Kalamazoo. Don't ask me what the state is, but it's Kalamazoo City, right? What's the state? Um, I'm going to unmute you, honey. Okay. Yeah, What's I'm in Michigan. 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 Okay, but I remember the Kalamazoo. And Jeannie has a company called Jeannie's Cleaning Services, and she has like this bewitched little Tabitha caricature on a, on a broomstick. Um, I love your branding. It's just awesome. Um, so pick up your phone. And let's just go to your business page. So I, I use Facebook Pages Manager, which is um, that little white paint right. there with the orange flag. Right. I've got that. that. So that's typically what, it, that's what mine looks like. Okay. Okay. So where your logo is, the little blue plus button, if you just press your logo, you should get this drop down menu here where it says create story. Mm, I'm in the wrong place. Oh, here we go. There we go. Oh, blue. Okay, blue plus button. Got it. And then create story. All right. So I'm going to create a story right now, and you can see it. So I'm going to. You can all smile at me. I'm going to take a picture of the screen. Cheese. So I now just took a picture of my phone. Okay. Then I press next. Um, actually, I didn't want to press next. I wanted to uh, play with it. But anyway, once once you've done that, let me do it again. I'll just take another picture. Then at the top, you'll see all these little white icons. And the, the main one I want is that little sticky note with the smiley face. So, and it gives me all of these options. Okay. You, right? So you could do a location. So right now it's 1448. So I could press that so I know what time it is. I can do it again and I can see what the weather is. To me, it's eight degrees and rainy. I can check into a location. So if you were at uh, your, your office, you could put that in. So I'm going to put it in view, make stuff happen. So I've now checked into my location, which is all, so all these little things are already as part of my story, right? Right. And that, and then I can tag people in this. So I could, I could tag a business. I could put the day of the week. Um, I can put some text. It's like fun masterclass or something like that. And... So I, I already created a story in like next to no time at all. I just press send or next, uh, you should say. I created a story. It's as simple as that. What and we want to do is we want to think behind it. It's like what makes a good story? Uh -huh. Whether it's a short video, whether it's your team outside the office about loading all the buckets and mops and whatever into the back of the car, whether it's you decanting green cleaning product into the bottles to go spray whether it's um, a customer that just came by to bring you a gift basket as a thank you for looking after mom when she was sick. All these things happen in your industry, right? Mm -hmm. But what you want to do is just share the moment. Literally what's going on in the moment is a story. Like what's happening now? And, um, and then you can share that story to your Instagram account as well, or you can create different ones. Instagram has different graphics and different mm -hmm. widgets and stuff, but... Um, I would try and do a different story on Instagram than you would on Facebook, just to give people a reason to follow you on both. Um, but it's as simple as that. And then is it, you were talking about your 
your business page versus your personal page? Do yeah. you typically share your stories first to your personal page or do your business um, page? I, what do you find works best? I try and use my personal story to be more motivational and I try and use my business story to be more educational. Okay. Um, I try not to do the same thing on both because what <laughs> happens is when you're on Facebook, and this is the coolest piece, is when I go to Facebook and I just go straight to my normal page, what's at the top of my Facebook? All the stories. Right there. Mm -hmm. so, and the more you engage with somebody, the more that story appears right in front of somebody's eyes. So if I have my story and my business page next to each other, and it's the same thing, it kind of looks a little strange. So as I say, my, my, my story for today is a motivational quote, whereas my business story is more educational. So, but people know you and your husband from the restaurants you used to have and the town in which you live. So have you and your hubby in some of your stories, but then have some of the, the teams and the business in the business story. And whether it's like how to clean a microwave or bicarbonated soda in a, and a tumbler of water or mm -hmm. how to clean smudges off stainless steel sinks, all these little tips that you know, like don't assume that everybody else knows. And right. just having those short little 15 second videos could be, could be huge for you. If you want to get longer with the stories, you can go up to a minute. But once it goes past a minute um, on Instagram, it becomes what they call IGTV. It's a separate app and it's a separate mm -hmm. way of uploading, but you can then go up to 10 minutes on Instagram television. And that's a, that's a different strategy again, but right. when you are shaving chronicles on Facebook, I save it to my phone and then I upload it to Instagram TV as well. And that, uh, that's how we do stories. I mean, Tommy's there in his gym in San Diego there. It's a, it's a wonderful sort of almost like a drive through building that became the gym. And, um, that's cool. So many people that go in and, and I know that some of his clients actually go there to hide from the office and they don't want people to know they're working out and that's okay too. So be respectful of the clients that you have and permissions and so on. But at the same time, don't be the internet's best kept secret when it comes to the cool stuff that you do, right? Right. Yeah. Does that help? Yeah, that's I'm great. Thank you. That. Um, Kiki says, how do you get Google reviews from those people that don't have Gmail? You actually don't need a Gmail account to write a review on Google, but you do need a Google account. Otherwise it just says a Google user and those reviews mean nothing. What happens Kiki is, is if someone has a Google account, they don't, have, they don't have to have Gmail, but they need an email. But if they set up a page, they put their picture into it and they write more than one review, there's a lot more weight to that review than somebody who just writes a you know, you see it a lot. You go to somebody's profile, they've never, normally it's a bad review, <laughs> which we see a lot of. Um, doesn't mean to say you should not be on Google because of bad reviews. You just have to own it. But if, if there's no picture and it's a false name, it means nothing. Or it's a picture and a real name, it still means nothing. So you've got to have a proper Google account and, and educating people to that. I, I'm a level six Google user. So I'm, I'm a, what's called a local guide because I've written nearly a hundred reviews now. My reviews are almost the very top of every company that I write a review for because my reviews, my reviews carry more weight because of the way that I've actually written many, many reviews. So it's a great way of actually getting yourself in front of the public is by writing a lot of reviews and getting them there. But for your clients, you know, the easiest way, and it's, it's the, it's the awkward way, but it's the easiest way Kiki is when you're with them and you've done their mortgage and they've moved in and they're happy and you've gone around with a gift basket, and they, and they just say, wow, is there anything I can do with you? And you say, I'd love for you to write a review. Yeah, 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 we'll do that. You know they're not going to do it. But you say, okay, I'm, I'm going to talk about the elephant in the room here. You mean to do it. I know you mean to do it. I'm going to leave, and it's probably not going to happen. How about you and I do it right now? Let's just open up the, the coffee. Let's just get the coffee going, and then I'll show you how to do it. And tell you, tell you what, 99% out of 100 people say, okay, sure and just show them how to do it. be the educator and you will get the most, and, so, and just say, I'm not looking. You can say what you want. I just want to help you do it because I know you mean well, but I also know that time, time is our worst enemy. And that's how I do it. We don't just teach social media. We know how to make money and have fun. And that's what it's all about. So I have five more minutes. Who's got a question? Seriously? Okay. 
I have lots of questions. So hopefully, have you signed up for the social media jumpstart guide? Next question. Do you have it in your email? Because if not, just go to wemakestuffhappen.com. Sign up. I am not going to ask for the birthright of your uh, you know, first child or anything like that. You'll get a simple series of three emails, which is how to, when to, and the calendar. And at that point, you, know, you want to carry on. You know, carry on. If you don't want to carry on, that's okay too. We have very, very low unsubscribe rates. We don't kill people with email. We maybe do one every other week, maybe sometimes once a week. But invariably, the educational, the motivational, the fun, and we just tell people what we're up to. People actually like that. So don't run an email if you have nothing to write, but if you do, make it fun. And they come out, um, they come out, oh, do I do this every Tuesday? Yes, typically I am online 2 p.m. Tuesday and 10 a.m. Thursdays, which is when I teach my classes. So the social media bootcamp that's coming up, I'll be teaching at exactly this time on a Tuesday for five straight weeks. And then every Thursday, I have what I call virtual coffee. Cheers where I literally have a hot cup of coffee in my hand for an hour and we do hot seats for a whole hour every week. So what I teach on a Tuesday, I help people implement on a Thursday and I give people homework for all our adults. You don't have to do it. I make people do it. But those that really get into it and want to do it, you know, I, I go the ex Nancy, I'll tell you, we go the extra mile. She turned up about two weeks before Christmas. I think it was three of us for an hour. I think Nancy got 25 minutes private one-on-one -on -one coaching from me <laughs> and I was in my zone. Um, so they're not big groups. We don't do big groups. Um, and I have a lot of homework now because of it. You're welcome. Nancy yes. is the app mama, by the way. She actually works with a great team of uh, great people who make mobile apps for business and uh, very unique to that specific business. And it's lovely to be able to speak to somebody who understands modern day English for one of a better, there's a lot of techie people out there who speak jargon and can make you an app, but do they, can, can you actually correspond with these people in real time and do they understand who you are and what you're trying to achieve out of the business? Probably not, but Nancy does. And that, that makes a big difference that people feel an affinity with the person that they're working with. Thank you. I take geek and translate it into English. Oh, there you go. Yeah. And Kiki signed up. Thank you for that. Uh, any other questions that we've got here? Um, no. Okay. So I mean, if anybody's got another question, you want me to have a quick look at some, is, is it Erin? Erin still here? Is she gone? She's still here. I'll just show you something that Erin just did today. Um, share my screen. I would highly recommend you do something like this, but in my Facebook, I go to, um, Erin's company and it's called Inspiration Squared. And Erin invested some good money in having a video made super well. And it's a, it's a series called The Proof Talks. And um, you go on stage, it's a live audience, and you get up to 10 minutes, I believe, to sort of do a talk. And when Facebook catches up with me, this is Erin's talk, it's just over seven minutes today. And she's launching a brand new program, and her program is very much built around story. I mean, I love story. And I, I want you to watch it and listen to it, because you will love it because it will make the hairs on your arms stand up because it's just one of those stories. So I'm going to put Erin's Facebook page in the group here. So yeah, but I would highly recommend that you, um, you watch Erin's video because that is like, it's excellent way to go Erin for doing that. Um, I've, yeah, I've never seen anybody do a story like that and it's phenomenal. So please go watch that. And that's, you know, that's what's possible. Um, do I do live events? Um, I do quite a lot of live speaking and I do quite a lot of facilitated workshops. I rarely do live events in public these days, Kiki. Um, not to say that I wouldn't again. I, I did them for 10 years and I kind of, kind of got evented out. And, and truthfully, we have so many people around the world that I don't get to see personally, but I get to work with that. Um, we just make the most of, uh, of, of live internet events, if you like. So, but yeah, I'm not, I, I'm not against it, but uh, not, not as many as we used to as, uh, as things have gone on. So anyway, we're exactly at three o'clock. Thank you very much for joining me. This is recorded um, by signing up. You will have got a recording. I'll, I'll share a recording as well on my Facebook. If, uh, if you didn't sign up for this, if you just jumped in, you'll find a recording. If you want to share it with somebody, 
If you want to come back and join me again this time next week, I'm going to be deeply showcasing how social media works with particular companies that we've worked with and I have permission to share their results. And these are all people that went through this social media bootcamp as Nancy did, as Erin has done, as uh, Jeannie did, as Lindsay has done more times than I care to remember. Um, just showing people you know, what it would be look, work, working, working with us and what that would look like for a pretty, uh, pretty nominal investment. It's um, 997 bucks to work with me for five straight weeks live. So that's the cheapest thing we have on our program. So yeah, so that is us. Thank you very much for joining me. Just about kept my voice going for the whole hour. I'm pretty happy about that. And um, thank you. I really appreciate you joining me and giving me this time. Hope that was some use. Hope that inspired you to go back and look at stories or Google My Business or making a video. Um, way to go, Erin, for coming out today. That's awesome. And um, yeah, go like her page. And uh, we will see you again maybe in the next week. Or we're not friends on Facebook. Let's change that right now. And if so, hit me up and let's chat and messenger too. Thanks, everybody. Bye for now.